American company Motorola is the first company that released a cell phone. This was a model called Motorola DynaTAC 8000X. Just like Terminator T800, it was released in 1893. Right, we continue with a series of episodes on interesting cases of famous companies and their founders on our channel Smaps TV. We take a closer look at their ups and downs and to the events that changed their history. In this series, we've already talked about Marvel and we'll cover a Hollywood company that gave us an Oscar nominated movie about Steve Jobs and Apple Company. Cases of this kind are analyzed in the best overseas universities, while stories of their top managers are given as an example to employees from all over the world. Hello, Moto. Motorola held leading positions in the field of communications and embedded systems for quite a long period of time. In 2010, it was ranked 110th on the Fortune 500 list, a list of the largest US companies. And in 2011, it was split into Motorola Solutions and Motorola Mobility. The second was later purchased by Google. So how come that this mobile phone protecting company had at first such overwhelming success? And then equally overwhelming decline. The 1996 StarTac model, the world's first flip phone, became a real bestseller. It was also one of the first mobile phones with a vibration alert. Motorola adopted this feature from pagers, which Motorola specialized in. The model weighed 88 grams, proving to users that a cell phone can actually be convenient. Well, as a result, they sold about 60 million pieces. By the way, if you had a pager, write in comments. <laughs> Later on, the C350 model was released, which appeared on our domestic market in 2003. The success of this model was due to the presence of a colored display and affordable price. Before that, a colored mobile phone display almost didn't exist. There were only a few gray solutions. After that, E398 was released, which was almost as modern and youth as its predecessor, but had two dynamics. But the real popularity was gained by the... It's a hit, guys. The Razer V3 model, released in 2004 due to its design. It was a thin flip phone that could be called um, a dream phone before iPhones came along. The model had been released for four years and during this time over 130 million pieces were sold. But just as the careers of many greater sportsmen must come to an end, the phones have a tendency to go out of fashion. Others come to replace them, and here we can see the first mistake of uh, the company. Just like Barcelona was uh, very dependent on Messi, Motorola was just as dependent on Razer. I mean, no doubt Razer V3 was a very successful model, but its creators were just too fixated on it, supporting only the one that made them a fortune. The game cannot be won with only one player, the world does not stand still. Competing companies expanded and created something new, and that's when the revolution takes place on the world stage. The iPhone comes out. Everyone wanted to buy an iPhone, even those old-fashioned guys who preferred to quietly click uh, buttons. Well, not so quietly, actually. Anyway, deep down, even they wished to have an iPhone. Even before iPhone, there was BlackBerry with a QWERTY keyboard adored by Obama and Madonna. In 2007, the iPhone eclipsed them both. In short, Motorola did not have a decent response to its competitors. So it's not surprising that interest to the company began to decline. Even before the release of the iPhone in 2005, Motorola made a mistake that negatively affected sales. The release of Rourke E1 model, similar to its uh, predecessor E398, with one single difference. A button that brings up a musical player, the main feature of which was iTunes support. However, Motorola did not take care of additional memory, so only 100 songs could be stored in the phone, which, in addition to that, took a very long time to load. What do you think happened? 
the company began to take significant losses from the fourth quarter of 2007. In 2008, over 300 workers were fired. In summer of that year, another 4,000 employees were cut from work. In 2009, Motorola sold two times less phones than in the previous year. For four years, shares fell in price by four times. In 2008, part of the employees moved to Apple to work on a new iPhone. A year later, the company announced plans to split into two parts, which happened in 2011. Then two companies arose, Motorola Solutions and Motorola Mobility. And in 2012, Google purchased unprofitable Motorola Mobility for $12.5 billion, which became one of the biggest acquisitions in the history of Google, and which is actually can be considered not a bad deal for Motorola. The co-founder of Google, Larry Page, stated after the deal that the acquisition of Motorola would expand the company's patent portfolio, which will strengthen the positions of Android against Apple and Microsoft. But it seems like even Google had failed, as two years later it would sell Motorola to Chinese Lenovo. Why did the Chinese need a fading Motorola? Because earlier they bought IBM's computer business and turned it into a thriving company. So they wanted to do the same with um, Motorola. Just for the record, the oldest mobile phone manufacturer in the world. American manufacturer. It's Chinese from now on. Employees were fired, the production was transferred to China and, and only the brand remained. But the problems didn't end. The rich Chinese signed not the most convenient contract, which let the board of directors of the American company stay in the administration. Moreover, it was untouchable. Because of this, the Chinese couldn't make all decisions on their own and had to put up with it. Another problem? was a mess in names. Yes, they've got their American toy, but didn't really know what to do with it. Maybe they thought, first of all, we've got to change the name. So at first it was Motorola, then Lenovo Moto, then just Moto, and then Motorola again. Well, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, and as for Motorola, it's Moto. The rich have their quirks. The next problem of Chinese is a marketing problem, and it was serious. Motorola had been forgotten in many markets. They had to work hard to regain a good reputation. And this task is extremely difficult if you already lost the market. Do you remember any catchy Motorola advertisement? Other than the legendary Hello Moto slogan, nothing really comes to mind. And by the way, they return to it later repeatedly. The banger from the past, but with no real present. As for the second company, Motorola Solutions, its attempts to correct mistakes led to the sale of assets. It was partially sold to Nokia, which later sold it to Microsoft. Although it's worth mentioning that it bought Motorola $1.2 billion in 2014. Well, I keep talking about the company, but I haven't said a word about its main figures. It's important to know that it was founded back in 1928 by brothers Paul and Joseph Calvin. The company made power supply for radio receivers and subsequently radio receivers. What do you think caused the rise of the company? The reason is quite usual. Right, it's war. Just like pipelines of General Motors and Ford produced everything starting from tanks to engines, Motorola produced radio transmitters called Motorola SCR3000, a wartime walkie-talkie that was a metal backpack. During World War II, Motorola managed to earn $80 million a year by selling military backpacks and was among the 100 most important American companies producing military equipment. What can Motorola boast now? I mean, Lenovo. Lenovo Moto. It's quite obvious that the brand, whatever you call it, it's not as popular as it was before. I can tell that at least because neither you nor your friend is having Motorola phone right now, and your daughter doesn't ask you to buy her the latest Motorola. And the whole world is not waiting for the autumn presentation of the company. Nevertheless, the company continues to live, feeling quite well, all due to the Chinese market, where it's possible to sell everything. Thus, net profit of the company in 2018 almost reached $1 billion. Motorola relaunched Razer, still a flip phone, but now with a flexible display to compete with a Samsung that flip. But honestly, I don't really get the idea of flip phones, especially when they cost over 1500 All in all, if compared with competitors, Motorola makes a strange impression, both in some features and innovations, and in advertising. 
there is no real wow effect. But there is a question, why? If you buy a phone for $1500, then you probably expect to be a trendy beaten Apple or Korean device with a camera of an infinite number of pixels. If you bought an American company and stuffed everything with local materials, then why are the prices still American? Not in a million years Chinese cherry is sold at the price of a catalog. Well, Philosophy Minute is over.